Hey guys, uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about how we can solve and graph compound inequalities. So brief recap of stuff we've done in recent past. We've, we've solved inequalities, we've graphed them, and we've written their solutions as intervals. Now we're moving on to slightly more, I don't want to call them complicated, but more full-bodied problems. So here there's going to be two types of questions that we talk about. There's going to be inequalities in one variable with an and or an or between them. And then there's going to be inequalities in two variables with an and or an or between them. So first, we're, the, the first couple of videos are just going to talk about one variable. So well, let's get started. The, the four steps that I could think of are basically you solve each inequality separately. You graph both solutions on a single number line on just a number line, not two separate ones. Now for and problems, you're looking for a sandwich. The word sandwich has the word and in it, so that's how I know which question to ask. I'm looking for where is the overlap? Where are the two lines on top of each other, if anywhere? They don't have to overlap at all. Whereas for or problems, if it's an or compound inequality, compound just means two of them together. And it could be more, but in this course, we're just worried about two. So for or compound inequalities, we're looking for where we are covered from the rain. Again, if I say it incorrectly and I spell covered incorrectly, uh, hopefully you see that it's just the memory aid. But for or problems, we're looking for where are we covered from the rain. So let, let's see what that really means before we start solving problems. So these are the different types of solutions that you can potentially get at the end of questions. So when you solve compound inequalities in one variable, these are the potential solutions uh, amongst many others that you can get. So first, I want us to think about, okay, if this is the graph on the left hand side, and we're given an or statement, we have to ask ourselves, where are we covered from the rain? What I mean by that is, imagine you're uh, miniaturized, and you're walking on this number line all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you're going all the way from the left to the right. And if there's rain falling all over the place, where are the solutions protecting you? Where are you covered from the rain? So you're covered until you get to three. Now imagine that the open circle is sort of like a hula hoop. So imagine you're holding a hula hoop above your head, you're going to get wet, the, the rain's going to go right through the hoop itself. So you're not protected or covered at negative three, but you're covered or covered everywhere to the left of it. So the way we would write this as an interval is we are covered from negative infinity to negative three, and we are not covered at negative three. And the, uh, we've done this in the past, we use parentheses to indicate that we're not including uh, a particular number negative three in particular in this case. Now, all this region, we're getting wet, so we are not covered from the rain. There's nothing preventing the rain from falling on us. But then the coverage starts, or the protection starts again, at 5. At 5, maybe someone gives you an umbrella. So here, because there's a solid dot, the rain does not get through. So we are protected from the rain at 5, all the way to the right, which is at infinity. Now what happens if we have the same exact graph, but instead of an or compound inequality, it's an and compound inequality. And with and, we're looking for a sandwich, or we're asking ourselves, where's the overlap? So think about the following. For number two, where do the two lines overlap? Where are they on top of each other? And hopefully you're saying that they're not, that they're two separate lines going in separate directions. There is no overlap between them. There is no two pieces of bread on top of each other. There's no sandwich. So in this case, you would actually say no solution. Now, what's common, the, the most common mistake here is that students think, oh, the moment the graph looks like that, this is going to be the answer. Pause the video, make sure you understand this completely. The graph does not dictate the answer. The word in the middle of the question is what tells you how to read the graph. So what I mean again by that is, if it's, a, if it's an or compound inequality, you have to ask the question about where are you covered from the rain, and then you're going to get this answer. On the other hand, if it's an and compound inequality, you could potentially get the same exact graph. However, the question you're asking of the picture is different. So no solution. So imagine looking at 
the Mona Lisa. You could be asking two questions of the same painting. One question could be, where is it located? So you'd say it's located in a museum in Paris. And number two, who painted it? So those are two different things that we can ask looking at the same image. We can say Da Vinci painted it and it's located in Paris. So it's still the same painting. It, the painting doesn't tell us uh, specifically the answer to some question. The question is what defines how we're looking at the painting itself. So similarly, let's look at number three and four. Here we have two overlapping lines. And in fact, if you look at three and four, the graphs are identical. There's an open circle above negative three with the line going to the right. There's a closed circle above five with the line going to the left. Both graphs are identical. What we look at them and ask are different. And those questions are based on uh, the compound inequality word that's in the middle. So if it's an or compound inequality, then imagine that it's raining everywhere. And you're miniaturized, you're shrunk down to size, and you're walking from the left all the way to the right. Where are you covered from the rain? So one way I, I, I like to think about this is, well, in this region, from negative infinity to three, maybe I have uh, a rain jacket. So I'm not getting wet, I'm protected from the rain. Now, between negative three and five, maybe someone gives me an umbrella. So not only do I get protection from the rain jacket, but now I'm also protected by the umbrella. And then I take my rain jacket off because this region ends here, but then I continue to carry the umbrella. So I'm protected the entire time I'm walking. So the answer for this problem would actually be negative infinity to infinity because we are covered from the rain no matter where we look. We're covered all the way from left to right. So again, just because there's an overlap doesn't mean that you're looking only for the overlap. The, the compound inequality word tells you what question to ask. For and, we're looking for the sandwich. So if we have the same exact graph, we're looking for, hey, where's the overlap? Where are the two slices of bread on top of each other? And this is where the sandwich is. Now, the sandwich starts at negative 3, and it stops at 5. The thing you have to be careful of here are the parentheses versus the brackets. So where you have a solid dot and a line, that's a number that's included. So I have to include the 5 because 5 exists in the bottom line and 5 exists in the top line. It inclu it's included in both, so that's where the two lines overlap. The way I like to think of this or imagine this is if I have uh, two slices of bread, on the right side I have both pieces of crust, or I have the crust on both sides of the, uh, of the pieces of bread. On the left side, on the other hand, I have the bottom crust, but the top crust is missing. So I do not have an overlap there. The, the white part of the bread is there on top, but it's missing the brown crust on the side. So the negative 3 is not where the overlap is. It's everything between negative 3 and 5, not including negative 3, but including 5. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that, that's just a brief introduction. We'll see you in examples in the next video.